the bread of life. In our last story, Jesus fed 5,000 people with just five loaves of bread and two fish. He fed all the people with more to spare, and everyone awed at him. They wanted him to be made king, so Jesus departed before the crowd became violent. The disciples departed on a boat while Jesus stayed on shore to pray. Then, in power and glory, Jesus walked on the water to return with his disciples. Now we learn about the crowd finding Jesus once again. Instead of feeding them food, he feeds them the truth about who he is. He speaks powerful truths hidden behind awkward metaphors, so awkward that many depart from him, inspired by the Gospels. Hello, Pastor Jack Graham here with another episode of The Bible in a Year. We're so grateful for so many of you who are listening and engaging with God's Word with us. In our last episode, we heard how Jesus fed a multitude of people with just five loaves of bread and two fish, showing the people that God brings abundance even in the most unlikely of situations. The people were amazed but failed to recognize Jesus' true intent and identity. They tried to make him king according to their own desires, but he retreated to a quiet place to pray. Later, Jesus walked on the water striking astonishment, awe, and adoration from his disciples as they worshiped him. Today, we'll hear as Jesus teaches about the bread that truly matters, not the kind of bread that temporarily satisfies, but a bread that gives life, eternal life, and abundant satisfaction. Let's listen now to today's reading. The day after Jesus had fed the 5,000, he was on the other side of the sea with his disciples. They sat on the shore and ate together, enjoying the solitude away from the crowds. The people had seen the disciples depart on their boat the day before, but they knew that Jesus had not joined them. They searched all night and day for Jesus, not knowing that he had walked on the sea to join his disciples. The crowds had finally sailed and walked to Capernaum to find Jesus. They saw him on the shore with his friends and ran towards him. Rabbi, they exclaimed, when did you come here? They were worried that Jesus had left the region. They wanted to be near him to see more signs. Jesus stood on the boat to speak to the whole crowd. He was concerned about why they had followed him. So he spoke clearly, saying, You are not seeking me because you saw signs or listened to the teachings. You are seeking me because your bellies were filled with bread and fish. Jesus' words struck a chord with the people. He was right. They were so excited that Jesus was able to feed them, they came in expectation that he would do it again. Jesus raised his voice again, saying, Do not look to fill yourselves with food that perishes. You will be hungry again and again for it. But seek the food that satisfies your soul. Seek eternal life. The crowds were confused and curious at Jesus' words. What shall we do then to inherit eternal life? they asked. Believe in him who God has sent, Jesus responded. He was speaking of himself and the work he would do on the cross. How are we to know that you are the true one that God has sent, they asked. Even Moses gave our ancestors bread from heaven, manna. Jesus shook his head and said, It was not Moses who gave them manna. It was God. God is the provider of all things, and he has provided you with the true bread that gives life to the whole world. The crowds were stirring when Jesus mentioned bread that gives eternal life. They pleaded with Jesus, saying, Where is this bread? Could you give it to us? For they thought that Jesus was speaking of a specific meal. They did not understand the true meaning behind his words. Jesus raised his arms and shouted, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger again. They will be satisfied. Whoever comes to me will be taken care of. Whoever comes to me will never be cast away. I have come from heaven to do the will of him who sent me, and I am not going to lose anyone who comes into my arms. For the will of God is this, that whoever looks upon me shall have eternal life. Some people awed at Jesus' words, but others grumbled. Some of them spat on the ground and said, I know this man. He is the son of Joseph the carpenter, who is he to now say he has come down from heaven? Jesus could see the crowd stirring. 
they disputed among themselves as to whether Jesus was truly God himself. Jesus watched as they argued. Do not grumble among yourselves, Jesus said. The Father will draw those who come to me. Whoever has seen me has seen God. Your forefathers ate manna in the wilderness and they eventually died. However, whoever eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood will never die. These words repulsed many of the people. They cringed and said, Now he wants us to eat his flesh and drink his blood? The closer followers of Jesus were also disturbed by this. They found it hard to imagine themselves eating Jesus' flesh and drinking his blood. It reminded them of the old pagan rituals of the Canaanites. This is a hard saying, Jesus, the people said. Does this offend you? Jesus asked. I speak in the spirit who gives life. There will be some of you who do not understand and do not believe. It was true, for many of the close followers of Jesus had already been thinking of leaving his side. They did not believe the words of Jesus and were looking for any excuse to leave him. So as Jesus spoke, many of them turned away and left him. Jesus watched as dozens of his close followers left. All that remained were the twelve. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Are you going to leave me as well? Peter shook his head. Where would we go? He asked. You alone have the words of eternal life. Peter gestured to the other disciples and said, Even though you may be hard to understand sometimes, we have come to know that you are the Holy One sent by God. So Jesus and his disciples departed to the district of Tyre and Sidon. The sun was high and hot in the sky. The streets were busy with commerce and children played among themselves. As the disciples were walking, they were approached by a Canaanite woman. She was not a Jew, and therefore it was culturally taboo for her to come to Jesus, a rabbi. Please have mercy on me, O Lord. Son of David, have mercy on me, the woman pleaded. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. She writhes in pain and is tormented day and night. Jesus did not answer her. However, she persisted and walked with the disciples. Jesus was listening to her incessant cries. He heard her, but he was waiting to see the response of his disciples. Finally, the disciples leaned towards Jesus and said, You should send this woman away. It is not right for us to mingle with her. Jesus turned to the woman and said, You know I have come to shepherd the lost sheep of Israel. His tone was impassive and seemingly out of character. However, the woman did not waver. Please, Lord, help me. It is not right for me to take the children's bread and throw it to puppies, he said. Yes, but even the puppies get scraps from the table, the woman protested. Please, you are my only hope. Jesus smiled. The woman's answer revealed a humble spirit. Although Jesus had always planned to help her, he wanted her heart to be displayed among the disciples. Great is your faith, Jesus said to her. Go home. Your daughter is healed. Thus began the healing power of God extended to the Gentiles and not just the Jews. Soon the whole world would know that Jesus was the source of life and healing. This woman and her daughter were only the beginning. In today's scripture, Jesus and his disciples have sailed to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, away from the crowds. It was a moment of quiet that was growing increasingly rare as the crowds continued to follow Jesus wherever they could find him. And it wasn't long before they found Jesus again on the shores of Capernaum. Jesus knew their motives for seeking him were often misguided and even selfish. They weren't always seeking words of truth or even seeking miracles. They wanted physical comfort. So Jesus called them out, saying they weren't interested in what he had to say. They wanted to get their bellies full to eat more bread and fish. They were only thinking of today, of here and now, failing to see that Jesus had so much more to give to them. He told them that they should be looking for food that brings life, eternal life, rather than chasing after the food that will not last. To their credit, they asked Jesus what they were to do to get this eternal life. It was a good question, but one rooted in a belief that works could somehow make one right with God. But listen to how Jesus replied in Matthew 6, 29. Jesus answered and said to them, 
This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. This is the ultimate truth that Jesus is communicating to us today. There's nothing we can do to gain or inherit eternal life or salvation except by grace through faith in him, trusting and believing in Jesus and what he has done for us, his cross, his resurrection. This is the message of the gospel. Our actions, our behavior will certainly flow out of belief, but the work of salvation was done by Christ and Christ alone on the cross. There is nothing that you or I, any of us, can do to gain approval or right standing with God on our own. This is why we desperately need Jesus and that he gives eternal life, for it is by grace that we are saved through faith. But as we heard, the people still didn't understand. They asked how they were to know Jesus was the Messiah. After all, Moses gave them manna in the wilderness. Of course, it was not Moses who gave people the manna. And Jesus told this to the people very clearly. It was God who gave the manna. It is God who gives everything. He gives every good and perfect gift that comes down from above according to the scripture. It's a reminder to all of us that God works through people to bring blessings and provision, but we must never forget that it is God who himself provides for us. God is faithful and he never forsakes us and he always provides for us. And now Jesus said, God has provided the true bread of life. Speaking of himself, Jesus is the bread of life. And this bread satisfies the deepest hunger of the human heart, the deepest hunger of the soul. Jesus then told everyone that whoever would come to him and believe in him would have eternal life. Clearly, the people knew Jesus was special, very special, but to hear him say that he came from God and that he alone would give them eternal life was way too much for some. They saw him as a carpenter's son, just a man, just a carpenter. But Jesus went on. It was time for the people to hear the word of truth he came to give them. And when he said that he was different from that manna which their forefathers ate, he then said, anyone who ate his flesh and drank his blood would never die. Of course, those aren't the easiest words for us to understand. Jesus knew that this was difficult for many to accept. Some would even be offended. They could not understand. He was speaking a spiritual truth, but their minds were still focused on the physical, on what they could see, what they could taste. How often do we limit God by our own spiritual inadequacy? And so many that day left, and they didn't follow Jesus after that. So looking to his disciples, Jesus saw that they remained. And Peter's words are one of the great confessions of faith that we find in the Bible. Jesus asked them, will you also go away? And Simon Peter said, where would we go? You have the words of eternal life. Such great truth. In Christ and Christ alone, we have eternal life. His words are truth and his words are timeless. He gives eternal life. Peter's words demonstrated why Jesus chose him and the other men. They were far from perfect. They weren't educated men who knew all of the laws of the religious group, but they had faith and they put their trust in Jesus, even though they couldn't quite yet comprehend it all. They followed Jesus because they did believe that he was the one that God had sent. They followed Jesus because he was so compelling and so compassionate. All but one of the men and Jesus knew which one would betray him, chose to follow him all the way and to fulfill God's plans and purposes. Our reading closes with another encounter with an outsider, a Gentile woman in need of healing. She pled with Jesus, believing he could make her whole. Jesus' actions and words may seem harsh and uncaring, but they are far from it. He was teaching the disciples that his love, his grace, his healing— Ultimately, the salvation that he offers was meant for all, not just for Jewish people, not just for people like the disciples. It's a message for the entire world. Let's pray. God, we do thank you for eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for providing this gift to us. For your love, for your grace, for your help, for your hope, we give you praise. Thank you that you bring the words of eternal life to us every day, May we take those words to the world as well. May we bring the bread of heaven to earth by preaching the gospel and witnessing of your love and power to save. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham of Dallas, Texas. You can download the Pray.com app and make prayer and Bible study the priority of your life. And if you enjoyed this podcast, tell someone about it. Pass it on. Let others know because it is our desire to get God's Word to as many people as possible as fast as possible. And if you want to know more about what it means to be a Christ follower, what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, then go to jackgraham.org, jackgraham.org. And we have many resources that are available for you there. I also want to invite you to something very special, to join me and my wife, Deb, on a trip to Israel in 2024. We leave on April the 1st for a 10-day journey, a trip that you will never forget, the trip of a lifetime. We also have a trip to Alaska, a Bible study cruise to Alaska that goes in July. We would love to have you for one of those or both. Go to jackgram.org or prestonwood.org for information. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.